Imagine if you were skiing in a complete whiteout. That is basically the same senses that you need for when you're skiing as a visual impaired skier. You can definitely feel your way down the slope and instead of using your eyesight, you can feel how the skis are moving. Using different senses that people wouldn't necessarily use is, is one of the cool things about it. Well, I guess when she'd had some of her accidents, we thought, mm, maybe this was a step too far. The first race, I think my mum probably shut her eyes and, and was like thinking, what on earth? Why, why are we standing here watching, <laughs> watching my daughter do this? <laughs> so my childhood dream was to become a skier, to win a gold medal after watching so many sports people when I was younger win theirs. I was fortunate to meet Steve Redgrave. I held his medal and I, I wanted one of my own. We had two daughters already and my wife and I said that if we were forever picking men up and stopping her from doing things, we'd be doing it for the rest of our lives. So we made a conscious effort that we encouraged her to do anything. As soon as they were old enough to go, we packed all three daughters up and went to France for our first skiing holiday. I wanted to do everything and, and didn't quite realise where my limits were. We often laughed at actually, she says, I don't feel fear because I can't actually see the danger I'm in. Sometimes I had to remind her, actually, this is quite dangerous, so you should be slightly scared and you should be aware of the danger you're in. We'd done two or three uh, family holidays by then, just following me and putting her in lessons as well. So she did progress quite a bit, but then Disability Snow Sports UK said, you know, she's got potential, we need to uh, start seeing how we can train her. I think one of the first races, it was actually with my dad, and I was, I was really proud um, of both of us. It was an introduction to the race circuit with somebody who she trusted guiding her to get her to a point where we could actually start looking for a proper a proper race guide who was really going to you know stretch mena which i wasn't going to at the time i think my dad realized <laughs> that i wasn't um that i was a bit too fast for him it's when she started racing with proper ski guides and then the ski coaches would say you know she really stands a chance then going to you know world cups we went along to aspen in america and then was when we won three silvers and three golds. And that was really the moment where I said, do you know what, we can do this. I've always said that I wouldn't replace my, my eyesight if I could because I am where I am today because of that. Paralympics was just another level, really. The whole family were there. We had a great time. Skiing became so important because I was able to be myself. I fell in love with the feeling of the adrenaline, the excitement, the wind through the hair, the, the decisions I was able to make on my own. From an early age, she was fearless, basically. Very brave and incredibly determined, incredibly determined. The audience has to be completely quiet. During, um, during a race for visually impaired and blind people because we've got to be able to hear the comms. And then as soon as they cross the finish line, they can scream, they can shout, you've gone from zero to 100% in a matter of seconds. Men are used to say, we seem to be having more fun than she was. I can definitely always pick out my family for that they're screaming so loud that um, I know it's them. Now she's got her own house, I think there will be a cupboard for all of her Paralympic medals, globes, the World Cup globes, and hopefully future medals. To have my own space means quite a lot, and it means I can put my stamp on it, I can put the little quirky ski memorabilia up. Being able to sleep in my own bed, that's how I like it, and nothing's moved, nothing's changed. It's been a little while since I have raced, and this will be my first few races that I've left from my own home. There are times in Paralympic years, really big competition years, where she's actually away for quite lengthy periods of time which uh, can be a bit of a drag. 
So when I'm away for, for long periods of time to have home comfort is really important. Sometimes I'll take my own pillow, I'll take my own tea bags, mug and kettle. It makes it feel more, more at home. I do call back home quite a lot. My mum likes to know what I've done every day, pretty much. And it's always nice to hear from them and, and keep up with the family. Both her mum and I are really proud of what she's achieved. We always used to say, do the best you can and the rest will take care of itself. And, well, it seems that the rest has taken care of itself.